My name is Nadir Erbilgin. I'm a forest entomologist. I focus on the tree chemistry or tree chemicals, how the trees defend themselves. What we do, we basically, we investigate uh, all issues that are harming our forest health. For the last 10-15 years, the beetle literally killed millions of millions of trees, including in Canada, British Columbia, here in Alberta, and then our forest industry or pretty much really threatened by these insects. But what we accomplish with this project, we're really going to determine some individual trees that they might show resistance to the mountain pine beetle outbreak in nature. And we will identify those individuals and we're going to hopefully propagate them in a larger scale to keep our forest uh, healthy actually or sustainable for future generations. Chemical ecology means really simple discipline looking at the chemical interactions between organisms. In this case, we're looking at the chemical interactions between the trees and insects. Basically, what trees produce might have an impact on the beetles. What we're looking at in our lab, we do a lot of chemistry because of that reason we seen it uh, gas chromatography and liquid chromatography we have. Gas chromatography is look at the chemicals that uh, basically like the oven. When you injected the chemicals inside the GC, gas chromatography, it burns it and then we can identify molecule by molecule what's coming out at the detector. So we know what chemicals we have inside the tree. Liquid chromatography is exactly the same thing. Instead of burning chemicals, they use a liquid form. And principle is the same, detecting molecules by molecules. We can identify not just only chemicals we identify. We know how much those chemicals are present in a particular point in time in that particular tree. That's going to be really, really useful because but this allows us to determine when the insect, the mountain pine beetle, enter the tree, we know what kind of uh, chemicals they are facing. That is really important, that might help us to maintain our forest healthy, basically. In order to study and understand the beetles, actually we rare beetles like our livestock in the pine bolts. And these are about 30-35 centimeter bolts. We put the one male and one female beetles. They mate. The female beetles, she lay eggs along the gallery walls. Uh, within a few days, those eggs hatch. And then larva develops up different developmental stages. And they overwinter as a larva too in, in a forest. And we usually take some time to take the bolts with the larva inside, put in a cold room. Sort of, uh, we try to simulate the winter conditions and bring, bring back again. And in a few months, we will have uh, beetles that are emerging from these bolts. So we can use these ex bolts and the beetles emerge in our next stage of our experiments. Those containers, when if I open the containers, you will see bolts. These are standard containers, and but they do a really wonderful job. We keep the containers dark because, again, we have to simulate the, what the beetles are facing. They don't like the light, right? When they're eating under bark, you have to keep the dark conditions. But they continue feeding and feeding and feeding, and within a few months, we will get uh, lots of lots of beetles from our bolts. In this case, uh, one of the undergraduate students actually is working on uh, how the various disturbances such as fire, mountain pine beetle outbreak, or harvesting affect what's happening in uh, soil microbial community. Uh, in every microbes in soils are respire a lot. A lot of chemicals come out from soils, including CO2 and other chemicals too, and that could be very important for greenhouse gases. What we do, we ask in the questions, okay, we have a various disturbances, how they affect the chemicals that emitted from the soil 
That's why we saw that we have a collection jars that basically trap the chemicals coming out from each soil and using our gas chromatography and liquid chromatography, we identify those chemicals. And we can extrapolate, you know, we have the amount of soil, for example, 10 gram of soil, we put it, and if these amounts of chemicals coming, what would happen per hectare or per, you know, the tons or, you know, other metrics we can use, extrapolate at the larger scale. But the important point is, this is really dealing with ecosystem function, how the disturbance is uh, part of this ecosystem function or they alter this ecosystem function. Forest is our lab basically, so I spend a lot of time in the fields. Several, several weeks I join my students, graduate students, my postdoc and undergraduate students to observe what's happening in the field. Without these observations, our laboratories really means nothing. You know, we are, we gain all the materials, obtain our material from fields. And this project will allow us to a little bit scratch the surface and look at the, the dynamic interaction between mountain pine beetle and the pine trees. And hopefully we will, uh, we will reveal some secrets that how the trees survive for decades or centuries actually, or millennia, under the threat of mountain pine beetle. And whether we can help them uh, to maintain the same ecosystem that uh, you know, our grandparents basically have it.